So now let's talk a little bit more about humidity and how it's measured. The types of humidity and also it's called saturation. I actually prefer humidity because saturation sounds like 100% saturated and humidity could be either 80, 20, 60, whatever. But you know, each of these two guys are easy to understand. So we're going to see three types, which is relative, modal, and absolute. And of course, we're going to see some charts. You know, chemical engineering loves charts. And you probably don't like them, but you will like them when you work, because a lot of data can be found in charts. We're talking about air and humidity at one pressure. So let's do the definition of relative saturation. This is the most typical and it's about, for example, when you are watching the news or you're checking the weather forecast, you see 80% of humidity and 60% of humidity and 20% of humidity. And you've probably seen that, uh, I don't know, Mexico is so humid compared to, I don't know, whatever, uh, to European countries and that jungle is humid, whatever. That means that you feel this like super wet sensation. You get out of the bathroom, you just take a shower and you feel like you are already sweating. This is when you approach high relative saturations or humidity. For the other side guys, when you go to a desert, you, you have this sensation of dry air. You feel like your lips are drying out and your skin is super uh, sketchy sketchy and you need to itch yourself and all this is because the air is so dry the air is taking out the moisture of your lips of your skin whatever so you have the two extremes and of course you have the center which are the normal cities and yeah that's just to give you an insight or idea of the relative saturation now what is technically this stuff it's uh type of measurement that compares partial pressure of water remember we have partial pressure of water versus the vapor pressure of water at that same temperature vapor pressure of water remember this at this temperature so let's compare this actually comparing I mean dividing don't just say oh this number is nice and this one is cool it's big no 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 we're talking about division here and we're using 100 just to let you the percentage because fraction I don't know it's not that uh, public friendly you say we have 0.5 of humidity guys will be like what the hell is that but if you say 50% they will be oh yeah it's like 50% is half so let me continue explaining the partial pressure of water you check it here and then you divide it by the vapor pressure of water and the vapor pressure, just to let you know, is like the, theor the theoretical maximum amount. So this means essentially that if you have 50% of water, you cool theoretically with this dry air at this temperature and at this pressure, you could still add more water as vapor and make it more humid and therefore uh, more, well, yeah humid like 80% as I told you before super uh, humid you feel the sensation of uh, sweating all the way and yeah but what happens when it reaches zero when it reaches zero simply means that you're getting dry you have no zero of course means nothing and P of A means also if you achieve to zero means that you have no water in the system so yeah just get used to that uh, we're going to use it later. You can actually also calculate from here uh, Y, A. Remember from Rhodes Law. Oh, sorry, it's not A, it's water. Water, water pressure. So, what is P? You will always be able to calculate this given pressure and vapor pressure. So, yes, from here you can calculate the vapor pressure or actually not calculate, you can find it, and yeah, you have everything, guys. Now, molal saturation. Probably you've heard this before in chemistry. Molal means comparing moles. And we're going to comparate moles of dry air and vapor. <coughs> so,
So it's simply moles of vapor divided by moles of vapor-free gas, or as I like to call, mole of vapor or water divided by mole of dry air. This is kind of, I don't know, it's in pressures. I don't like it that much, this definition, but you can, you can all use it too. It's easy. I don't like it that much. I just prefer to find the moles of water, find the moles of dry air, and divide them. And I bring you an example, guys. Uh, imagine we have two uh, gram moles of water in this mixture, and we have uh, 180 gram mole of dry air. If we wanted to check the molar humidity, we will just simply need to divide this, which will give you 0 0.01 gram mole of water per each gram mole of dry air. So that's nice. You can have a direct comparison for one mole of dry air. How many moles do I have of water? And please let me tell you guys that this is not a mole fraction because many people will tell me, ah, oh, come on, it's drier, I have water divided by drier, that's the definition. But now, guys, the definition of mole composition is the addition of all moles, which in this case will be the moles of dry air plus the moles of water. And you have here water, for example. This is, of course, not the same as water divided by the A. You are losing this factor which probably is not that much guys, but the great, uh, the bigger it gets, the worse the calculation error we make. So please, as a concept or a theoretical concept, don't use it. If you are working in a problem or exam and you don't, have, you don't have that much time, you can do this. Yes, you can. I will think it's okay, it's not that strong mistake numerically, but the concept guy, the concept is totally wrong. So probably your teacher, if he, he finds out, he will tell you, hey guy, you're wrong. But anyways, that's up to you. We're going to continue with the absolute saturation, which is here. Uh, it's similar to molal saturation, but now we're going to compare masses. And this is typical for guys that don't know how to work with moles. For example, mechanical engineers, which you will... See later that in thermodynamics they use a air constant for each substance which is kind of, I don't know, not efficient. I just don't want to hurt anybody. But they have R of water, R of CO2, the constant for nitrogen. Just because they don't want to use the concept of moles. They think moles is only for chemical stuff and no guys. But okay, let's do it. <clears throat> this is for people that don't like that much uh, moles and mass and actually if you're doing mass balance this could probably help you a little bit more and yeah it's essentially just the mass of vapor which I like to say mass of water divided by the mass of dry gas mass of dry gas dry air or I use kilogram of water divided by kilogram of dry air and I bring you an example I have 50 grams of uh, vapor, which is 0 0.05 kilograms. I have 2 kilograms of dry air. And they tell you, please calculate the absolute saturation. And you do it, and you get 0 0.025 kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air. And once again, Sky, this is not a mass fraction. Because by definition, mass fraction is, let's say, mass fraction of water. Mass fraction of water is x of water equals the amount of water divided by the total of, mo of mass and the total of mass is not only water it's water plus dry air guys so this is only dry air and we need to actually check dry air plus water and as I said before guys don't worry in the other problem or oh, in the other section this model saturation I told you about it Actually, it's not a huge error. Errors will be around 5% or so. But the concept, guys, is the important thing here. And especially the more water you have in your system, the more you will have this error. So take care. And once again, it's up to you. So with all this data, the important thing here is to either you get partial pressure of vapor and you could get or calculate mole fraction of vapor mixture.
which is this here. This is what we want for our mass balance. Now let's do a uh, saturation humidity exercise. We have air at these conditions and they are nice enough to give you the relative humidity. No worries, we have a equation for that guys, so let's keep doing it. It's fed into process units, uh, they give you this volumetric flow and they ask you number one, molar flow rates of water, okay, dry air and oxygen entering the process. They ask you the molar humidity, absolute humidity, percentage humidity and the dew point. Remember this guys, we're not going to do it. I did it, but we, you don't need to calculate this for this class. So, we have this system. And the first thing I want to do is from tables or books or graphs, I check this data. 75, I have 289 millimeter, millimeters of mercury here. So that's good, I have it. Now, from the definition of relative humidity, we have the partial pressure of water divided by the vapor pressure of water at that temperature times 100. So we have 30, yes, we have 30. I pass dividing this 100, and I have this value which I got from books. So the only thing we have left is this. Now this, we calculate it, and we get this value. So that's nice because with this number here, which is P water, we can bring it here to this, hopefully you know it guys, this definition. I'm just going to put it just in case. It's times P equals P water, sorry guys about that. And yeah guys, just go for Y here. Just pass this dividing and you get this. P water we just calculated, total pressure is 1.1 bar which is here. But the thing here is we need to change uh, units. We could either, either change millimeter of uh, mercury or bars. And because almost all the humidity stuff is done in millimeters of mercury, I'm going to change the bars to millimeters. So I get this. And finally, I get this number, which is the amount of water per mole. So that's cool. We have the initial concentration. Now, let's go for the flow rate. We got volumetric flow, yes, we got R is a constant, P is given, and temperature is also given. So we can find our mole flow. Yes, 1000, we change this to Kelvin, sorry, this is not R, this is K. And the ideal gas constant for bar is this. And I get this number. The amount of mole entering this flow rate. And of course I want to check how much water is in it, so I just need to multiply by the mole fraction, which is here, times 38, they will give you 3.99, just because I'm kind of lazy and I want you to show it easier, it's 4 kmol per hour of water. Now, we're going to find out the dry air. Dry air is simply the difference between 1 minus the mole fraction or the balance. So obviously you could say, okay, if 8 moles enters and 4 are water, then therefore are 3, 4 of dry air. So either you use this equation or you do this difference, you should get 34 kilomole of dry air per hour. And they ask you not only this, they are asking you about the oxygen and probably you are lost and you say, what? What the hell? Where is the oxygen? The oxygen, of course, is inside the dryer. So you know that the dryer has a certain composition of oxygen, which is 21%. So if you know how much moles of air are entering, which is 34, and you multiply by 0.21, you will get the amount of oxygen. And maybe your teacher could also tell you, well, also I want the mole flow of nitrogen, which will be only the difference between two or 34 times 79, 0.79, sorry. Good. Number two, they start asking you about a lot of humidities. I have them here. Uh, humidity molal, it's simply uh, <clears throat> this here, which I tell you I don't like that much, this one. I prefer moles of water divided by moles of dry air. 
Either of, uh, of those you use, you should get the same value. Moles of water are 4, moles of dry air are 3, 4, and you get 0.12. The same with this. But I think it's better, this one. Now, the absolute one is mass of water divided by mass of dry air. And it's the same, we know moles of water times molecular weight will give you mass of water. Now, moles of dry air times molecular weight of dry air will give you mass of dry air. So just doing the calculation, 4 times 18 kilograms, which is the amount of kilograms per kilomole of water, and we have 34 kilomole of dry air, and dry air weights can around 29 kilograms per kilomole. You just do this, do this stuff, and you get this number, guys. Cool. And this one, I don't want to explain you how much or how do I do it. It's just uh, humidity divided by the saturated humidity. Saturated humidity is this one. And this value, I get it from here. So just doing that, you get 21%. This type of humidity is just theoretical. I think it's a uh, percent humidity. I don't like it because actually you cannot relate it to uh, like a concept but okay guys they ask it to you just calculate it and number three you shouldn't be doing this but just if you're curious you look this in tables and you will find the dew point of this mixture is around 50 celsius and finally guys psychometric charts of course we were going to use charts we were not going to use those lots of number and data we can and you've seen how it's done how it's done, but now let's do psychometric chart examples. As seen before, it has two degree of freedoms. So we need, we have three variables, we have to set two. So if we set P, which let's say it's one atmosphere, which is almost all applications in, in processes, one atmosphere, we will only need to define either T and we get our mole fraction, or if we define our mole fraction, we will find a temperature. So the good thing is that the graph is already done. We don't need to calculate. Theoretically, you could do it. And thank God someone already did it. So we can use it. And it relates relative, well, relates humidity, data, absolute, relative, whatever, with temperature. Now, we're going to see all these variables in the chart, so don't get lost, guys. If you have some doubt, just pause the video and get back here. We're going to see specific volume of dry air. Important to differentiate dry air. Because when I say air, I'm assuming it's dry air plus water. So dry air, it's this. Cubic meter by kilogram of dry air. Which actually, if you invert this, you get the density of dry air. Now, this concept here, I'm going to explain it later, but it's dry bulb temperature. Let's say this is the typical temperature we get when you get the thermometer. is the temperature you're used to calculate, or to, you are used to measure, and the one you are used to understand. Now, I have this new concept here, guys, which is wet bulb temperature, which is the temperature you measure when it's wet. Don't worry, you don't need to understand it right now. We have also relative humidity and absolute humidity, which is cool because we know kilograms of water per kilogram of dry air will help a lot. And here is the psychometric chart for high temperatures. You have, oh, actually it's Fahrenheit, 110 and 20. This is in English units. Grains of moisture, you need to new grains is a measure of mass grain and you have pound of or pound of air dry air but normally no one uses that we or actually me I use pound of water is better to compare with the same pound of dry air so I will use this here probably if you're American you will understand more of that concept of grains I think it has something to do with a antique measurement of uh, grains like literally grains like uh, wheat, wet and barley and all that stuff but I don't get that much I prefer comp uh, to compare pants of water with pants of dryer 
And before explaining you, explaining you more, I think I have more slides on these. This one is low, low temperatures. And actually it's in Celsius degrees, it's done by Carrier. So that's cool. You probably know that the Carrier has AC, uh, uh, how to say, cl climate, uh, no. AC systems uh, for refri refrigeration. And why is it important? We're going to see it in mass or in energy balance course, we're going to see a lot that it affects a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot the water in the air because you need to condense it and condensing water is a waste of energy and money so that's why they made this table don't think they do it just because they are good guys and yeah let's see how to read this stuff which is kinda interesting because it has a lot of lines a lot of data and probably you're used to only relate to points and yeah we just did the same thing, but we are using multiple graphs in the same graph. So let's hit it. Absolute humidity, as I told you before, I used this one. It's the amount of grams of air divided by the kilograms of dry. No, let me check. Amount of moisture by kilogram of air. So you have, I don't know, seven, you will make this line. And probably cross with another line and you will get one value. Or cross with this line here and you get this value. Depending on where you get. But you can get this line here and you get this value. I don't know. But absolute humidity is the vertical, no, horizontal axis. This here. Now, relative humidity is kind of interesting. Are all these lines here? that are like this, that are going like this. Actually, you start with 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, all the way up to 100%. The 100% line, of course, is the one on the top here. So it makes sense. If you are going to have a relative uh, humidity high, it will go higher. And if you are in a low relative humidity, you're going to have a low, low versus high. So good. Now, dry bulb temperature, I told you before, is the temperature we are used to calculate is all these x-axis. So you want to find, I don't know, 35 degrees, it's here, you make the line, oh, sorry about that. You make the line and then you can cross whatever your interest line is. Now, right, so wet bulb, we're going to see this later, like in some slides uh, after. But it's this temperature here. 25, 30, 15, 10, 5, 20, whatever. All these lines are the wet bulb. And if you see, guys, it's when it's in this 100% relativity humidity. So it has something to do with that. Yes, we're going to talk about something of 100% relative humidity temperature. And the specific volume, which is kind of easy, it's just the inverse of the density, you have many here. So, I just explained you how to read the lines, but I didn't explain you how to read or how to find a point of interest. So, we either set the temperature, any, and set a humidity, that's the typical value. They give you one temperature, and you find the other humidity, and then you find the value. The thing here, guys, is that I could also give you two temperatures, the dry wet and wet, and you can find the data. Or I could give you two humidities, relative and absolute, and you can find the temperature. So it's kind of playing with the variables, which we are going to do a little bit here. Now, one thing, probably you're asking, where is the specific volume? And when I say one specific volume, a specific volume, or simply this. When I say this, I'm actually setting temperature. Why? Because if we relate with the ideal gas, you know this is a function of temperature. And since it's, the pressure is constant, it will not change. And the moles, we're analyzing the same quantity of moles, we're not. So the thing here is that when we give a temperature, we already set our specific volume. And backwards, if we give a volume or a specific volume, we are setting a temperature. So that's interesting. 
now. Simple example, what is the relative humidity of a stream at 30 Celsius degrees and has this amount of moisture per kilogram of dry air. So the first thing just I would recommend is locate the temperature we are talking about, which is 30. And I, I think you don't see that much, but this is at 30. Because it's dry. They're telling you it's dry bulb. And if they don't tell you, just suppose it's dry. Now the second thing you will do is locate the amount of water we're looking for, which is 7. 7 grams of water per kilogram of dry air. And the final thing you want to do is to set a point, which is here. Let me... here's a point. So let's do a zoom. And I have this line here. Remember these lines are relative humidity. This is 30%. And this line here, it's 20%. So the point we found is kind of here. It's, I think it's more near these 30% and the 20%. So I will say 28% approx, which makes sense because it's between two lines, these two lines and that's cool because we don't have to calculate anything we just do it, did it with the graph of course we could do our calculations and find the moles and the partial pressures and then compare them and get the relative humidity but with the psychometric chart, why? here we have it, let's use it and I think this is one of the last things we're going to see the dry bulb temperature it's a temperature of air measured by a thermometer freely exposed to the air but shielded from radiation and moisture. So what does that mean? I would like to call it is the temperature we know up to now. Actually it's the true value we're going to use in thermodynamics and does not indicate the amount of moisture of air. It just tells you, I don't know the moisture, I don't know anything but the cinetic Average of, mo of movement of uh, particles is 25 Celsius. Now the thing here in wet bulb that I want you to explain is how to understand it. Is temperature that air uh, that the air will have if there will be a cooled saturation. So it will be like a theoretic temperature if the relative humidity will be 100%. So that's why, guys, in the psychometric chart I told you that they are in this line with the 100% saturation. Now, the first thing is that you are going to evaporate water. What happens when you evaporate water? You take out energy of the system. And the system, what is? The thermometer. So if you take out energy of the system, probably you're going to lower the temperature. And, yeah, I told you before, latent heat is being supplied by the air. So air is taking an evaporating power. The lowest temperature that can be reached under current ambient, uh, current actual ambient conditions by the evaporation of water itself. Now, let me tell you, actual air temperature is dry and the amount of moisture is humid. So probably you're kind of lost. Don't worry, you don't need to understand this right now. Just know where to find wet temperature and remember that these lines are measured like this and also remember is the temperature it will have at 100 relative humidity this is how they measure it this here is a normal thermometer and this here has a cap field of water so it can evaporate and it will show you another temperature the wet temperature and the dry temperature. So yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done from this uh, part of this section. You need more problems guys, you need to calculate more uh, relativity, humidity problems, uh, Raoult equation, mass balances, whatever. Go to this web page, go to this section courses and go please to mass balance and you will find the problem section here. And yeah, I think it's everything I wanted to show you in this video. We're going to see next uh, break what we've seen and what's left of the mass balance block number three. So see you in the other video, guys.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.